for years, you have been asking for this review. Are you ready for my thoughts on the Sonos Arc? Well, I guess we're about to find out. Do I even need to do this next part? Okay, for those of you who have been living under a rock, the Arc is Sonos flagship Dolby Atmos soundbar. For this review, we've put the Arc with their top of the line subwoofer, the Sub Gen 3, and a pair of Era 300s to create what Sonos calls the ultimate immersive set. Retailing for a little over two grand, this setup definitely sits in what I would consider to be a more premium class of lifestyle home theater products, costing more than Samsung's top soundbar system, but not quite commanding B&O levels of financial commitment. Like Bang & Olufsen, Sonos has focused a lot of its attention on the Arc's design, build quality, and ease of use. The Arc is a very streamlined bar. It has a single HDMI input that supports ARC and EARC. If your TV lacks HDMI connectivity, though, there is an included adapter that will allow you to connect the ARC to your TV using an optical cable. But that's really it for connections, unless of course you include the Ethernet port. In addition to watching movies, you can enjoy stereo music, including spatial audio. Wireless options include Wi-Fi and AirPlay 2 through the Sonos app. And the app is the primary way to customize and control the ARC system, but you can also control things like volume, play, pause, and track skip using the ARC's touch-sensitive controls. Now, if you're the hands-off type, there is some voice support using Sonos's own voice control, Amazon Alexa, or Google Assistant. Getting the Arc in the whole Sono system up and running is pretty easy. We connected the Arc to three different TVs during our evaluation period. The Hisense 85-inch UX, Sony X95L, and TCL's massive 98-inch Mini LED, which is the TV you're seeing in this video. Both the TCL and Sony displays work flawlessly with the Arc when connected using an HDMI cable. The Hisense, though, it had trouble with the Arc, but I suspect this is the fault of the TV, as it had issues with everything we connected to it, so this wasn't a surprise. With with the Arc connected and plugged into a nearby outlet, we added the Sub and a pair of Era 300s, both of which connect to the Arc wirelessly, though not automatically. Inside the Sonos app, you must first connect each component to your home's network, which only takes a few minutes and is very easy on an iPhone. Once those speakers are online, you can then pair them to the Arc to create a full Dolby Atmos surround system. The Arc on its own is Dolby Atmos capable, and for small to medium sized rooms should give you all of the Dolby goodness you need, but in large rooms like ours, I recommend adding a pair of Aero 300s as Atmos enabled surrounds and the larger Sub Gen 3 for those low, low bass notes. The Arc will work with the Sub Mini, which is Sonos' smaller Sub, as well as the smaller Aero 100s for surrounds, but in my opinion, if you're looking to put together the most impactful home theater from Sonos, get the full size options. Speaking of the Eras, while Sonos prides themselves on flexibility when the Aero 300s are set up as surrounds with the Arc, Things like Bluetooth and voice command are gonna be disabled. This means that when they are used as rears, they cannot be used for any other purpose unless you unpair them from the Arc first. So if you wanna relocate the Eras to another part of your home or use them as say individual spatial audio speakers, you have to disconnect them from the Arc inside the app and then basically set them up all over again in order to take full advantage of their solo capabilities. This isn't a deal breaker, but something to keep in mind and something we pointed out in our full Era 300 review. Back to the setup process, it was easy to get all of the speakers set up and talking to one another. And I repeated this process over a dozen times over the course of several months without any faults. To get the best sound out of your system, the only thing left to do is tune the system to your room using the app and Sonos's own true play space tuning. Now calibrating, it requires you to walk around your room with your phone while a series of tones play from the connected speakers. Do not skip this step. It only takes a minute or two and the results are more than worth it. Once I had everything dialed in, the ARC system was very impressive for both movies and music. In truth, it's one of the more musically pleasing soundbar systems I've tested this year. It's more full-bodied in the mid-range and bass compared to the Samsung Q990C and Bose Smart Ultra soundbar, resulting in what I would call a more traditional two-channel hi-fi experience tonally. When I say tonally, what I mean is the Arc has a sound that more closely resembles a pair of small bookshelf speakers rather than a bar with really tiny speakers that rely very heavily on the subwoofer to get that extra weight you're likely going to want. No doubt this is why a lot of traditional stereo enthusiasts prefer the Arc to other soundbars. 
The arc is not neutral or linear across the bulk of its response. It's definitely been tuned with an overall sound that has more weight and that is slightly rolled off up top. This makes it great if you like a wide range of musical genres or if the quality of your recordings varies wildly. I really enjoyed listening to stereo tracks through the arc, but adding the sub gen 3 and a pair of era 300s adds a welcome spaciousness to the party, which I've preferred. This combo definitely opens up the arc's soundstage and allows the bar to image better, more like a traditional pair of speakers. Of course, if I threw on a true spatial audio track like, say, Get Lucky, Bad Guy, or an old favorite, Piano Man, the ARC system was at its absolute best. And after living with the ARC system as my daily driver, I have to say, I didn't think too much about my reference stereo setups, which is probably the highest praise I can give a system like the Sonos. Is it as good as our KIF R11 meta rig for strict two-channel music? No. But in terms of day-to-day -day enjoyment and just ease of use, for some of you, it could be the better solution. And that's even before we get to talking about movies. When it comes to the home theater experience, the ARC is a pretty good all-in-one Atmos system, especially when used in smaller spaces. But as I said earlier, to get the effect I think most people expect from a home cinema, it should be experienced with a sub and surrounds. With the sub and the Era 300s added to the mix, the cinematic impact of the Sonos system is just un deniable. This setup sounded huge. I'm talking full-bodied without being bloated and impactful without just tearing your face off. True, bars like the Samsung 990C and especially the Bose Smart Ultra with or without their dialogue aids on may seem a little bit more detailed, nuanced, and maybe even a little bit more treble for when directly compared, but when it comes to overall balance, I'm talking top to bottom, the Sonos wins. The tuning and transition between the speakers, especially with the Era 300s, is impressive and seamless. Watching dynamic action films like Top Gun Maverick showed just how well the ARC and the Era 300s can create that seamless dome of sound that tracks with surprising precision front to back and even left to right. While it's not uncommon for soundbar surround systems to score well when it comes to sounds moving laterally and, and front to back, the overhead aspect can get tricky, especially if you have higher ceilings or if the surrounds lack upward fire drivers, which was the case with the Bose or when we originally paired the Eras with the Sonos Beam Gen 2. Since the Beam doesn't have those upward firing drivers, the overhead sound collapsed as it neared the screen or neared the Beam. But when paired with the Arc, the Era 300s, it just sounds larger and more full range when it comes to its overhead presence compared to the Samsung system. This is obviously a plus, but it's also one of the reasons why the Arc system does cost quite a bit more. Dynamically, the Sonos system is fuller and larger sounding compared to the competition. That said, it may not seem as quick or as responsive as the Samsung or Bose. Now, I think this might be psychoacoustic since both the Samsung and Bose don't roll off as much as the Sonos, but all things considered, the Arc is still dynamically satisfying, especially if you can turn things up. Now, one area where I think the Sonos needs a little bit of improvement is in its dialogue clarity. Now, I found the bar to be intelligible, but when a being it against both the Samsung and the Bose, it just wasn't as immediately clear as either of those two bars. Engaging dialogue aids helps, but I would still put the arc in third place here. If dialogue clarity is at the absolute top of your home theater's priority list, the Bose Smart Ultra soundbar is the winner by just a country mile, but the arc holds a spot in my top five. Now for the part you've all been waiting for. Does the ARC beat out the competition? Well, when it comes to overall value, the Samsung Q990C is still on top. While the ARC does a better job at sounding more hi-fi when listening to stereo tracks, there's just no escaping the fact that you are paying almost $1,000 more for what I would consider marginal improvements in tone in this area. When it comes to movies, these two bars are very evenly matched. The Samsung is more adjustable and has a lot of additional features like HDMI switching, which only adds to its value especially if you have peripherals like, say, gaming consoles or Blu-ray players. But if you're a sound-first consumer and price isn't an object, then I could see you being very, very happy with the Sonos because it's just better crafted and a more musical solution. As far as surround sound goes, which includes investing in a pair of Era 300s and the Sub Gen 3, I would put the Arc system above the Bose Smart Ultra, as much as I loved that system. Sonos wins, at least for me, on the strength of its Sub and Surrounds, two areas where the Bose just comes up 
short. For about the same price, Sonos simply gives you more. But if you prioritize dialogue clarity, the Bose Smart Ultra on its own is nearly impossible to beat. Well, they say good things come to those who wait. Hope my remarks on the Arc were worth it. I really enjoy this system. And rather than tell you all to go consider picking one up for yourself, because you probably already have years ago, I'll end with a simple, I get it. I get why so many of you are happy with your Arc setups and how it could get even the most staunch home theater purist to consider a soundbar system for themselves because it's really good. So that's what I think of the Arc after all this time, but they really want to know what you think. <laughs> well, I swear if we get one comment saying, why are you reviewing a three-year-old product? I'm going to lose it. <laughs> she will. I will. She I will. will literally lose it and come for all of you because... <laughs> But now you know the comments are going to be flooded with that exact oh, I know. remark I know. With, with laughing emojis. Yeah, 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 yeah. There better be a laughing emoji. <laughs> <laughs> so listen, if I think that if you mostly watch TV for like sports and mm. the occasional movie, okay, but you don't need to hear like every single bad guy creeping up behind you, mm -hmm. I would get the bows. Okay, I hear you. Especially, especially if you have any hearing deficiencies, if you do a lot of late night watching, like let's say you have children that yeah. go to bed early and you need to, you know, watch your watch watch your content or whatever it is at a lower volume. Yeah. I think the bows that that more slightly tipped up treble mm -hmm. is going to give you in the intelligibility that you need. Yeah. I would agree. If you're on a budget mm -hmm. and who isn't on a budget, sure. like everybody has to decide what what you know fits right for them. Yeah. But you want what I would call the full shebang. Okay. I I agree with you. I think the Samsung's value is still untouchable. Yeah, yeah. It really I mean it is. is a fantastic system. Oh absolutely. Um but I think long term that this system is really going to be the most versatile. Correct. Especially if your situations change, mm -hmm. or let's say you upgrade to something else down the road. I mean, all, both of those scenarios are quite feasible, right? Absolutely. Um, I think you can easily use the Arc by itself in, say, another room or in a, a bedroom, maybe. Mm -hmm. And then maybe you could put the eras into even a different room where you're yeah. where you're more music focused um, for stereo for a stereo system. Mm -hmm. I mean, do whatever you want with the sub because you can. Yeah, you can even add a second one. So. Plus, it sounds really great. Dialogue clarity is, for me, the Sonos Arc's biggest downside. Okay. Um, so again, if that's something you need, I do believe the Bose and the Samsung are the better choices for you. Mm -hmm. um, but ultimately, while the initial investment is very expensive for the Sonos, mm -hmm. I, I can see you know it. Be, it's still being quite useful. Yeah. Even if, let's say, they come out with something new, sure. like an updated arc. Yeah. Okay, well now for the stuff that you didn't mention. Okay. Uh, I want to start with the Sony HT8A9. I'd actually forgotten about that until mm. you brought up the Sony TV. TV, okay. I think it's pretty comparable sure. to the Sonos entire system. Yeah, yeah, sure. I know that there, there's been issues with connectivity. Um, I, I don't even want to address that at this point. Like, Yeah, I think we've covered it. Yeah, we, we know it exists. We didn't experience it, yeah. so your mileage may vary. But in yeah. terms of sound quality, how would you compare the two systems? Well, I will say this. If you want to listen to two-channel music in a more strictly two-channel way, the HTA9 is going to give you that stereo imaging right off the rip. Whereas tonally, the bar, the arc, sounds very much like a small pair of bookshelf speakers. However, it doesn't quite have the phantom center or all of the imaging when it's just the bar by itself. And that makes sense because it's in the middle. It's not two speakers coming together to create a phantom center the way the HTA9 does. Now, when you add the Aero 300s to the bar, because they are firing from behind in the side of you, the imaging of the arc does open up and starts to sound a lot more like you have two ghost speakers off to the side and not something right in the middle. 
So, but understand that you're now investing in three pieces or four pieces because you want the sub. Um, whereas the HTA9 is all inclusive and then you add the sub that you want and I still recommend the SW5. Um, I do think that they are very comparable. They both do things a little bit differently. The Arc definitely benefits from a more traditional layout, whereas Sony's room sound mapping tech allows you to get away with maybe a less than stellar setup. So those of you where it's like, oh, my couch is up against the wall or, or I can't possibly put a rear speaker right there. As long as your Wi-Fi network is clean, um, I would probably say you should consider the Sony. Just kind of keep, keep that in mind. I think you get a little bit more placement flexibility with the Sony. And if I'm not mistaken, the Sony is now less expensive um, than the Arc system. Okay, now I want to talk about the Sennheiser Ambio. Now, oh, yeah. we haven't had this in a while. Okay. We're strictly talking about the original Ambio. Yes. For me, this is one of the more comparable options to the Sonos system, mm -hmm. like especially if you're just looking for a bar versus another bar. Right. Um, but in this situation, I think the Ambio does beat out the Arc by itself. By itself, yes. You get a dynamic system with really great Atmos effects and it's fantastic for music. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think the original Ambio is very stylish. <laughs> um, it, it's kind of ugly, if I'm being honest. Yeah. But if looks aren't important to you, I think it's definitely worth a look if you're mm -hmm. spending or considering spending Sonos level money. Sure, for sure. Um, for sure. On its own, just arc to Ambio. Granted, at that point, we are talking about a much different investment because the Ambio is like two grand, no matter what. The Arc on its own is only $800 unless you buy it on sale. So even if you add the sub gen three, which I would say you should add if you're gonna directly compare these two, um, the Sono system is going to be a little bit less expensive. However, it's not gonna do quite as good of a job surrounding you in that dome of sound by itself the way the, the Sennheiser does or would. All that said, I love the Sennheiser, you know I do. It was great, it was our reference for almost two years. Um, I'd rather have the Arc. It's just less imposing for me. Well, and it will also, the Arc probably fits more easily under TVs, like if you're doing a tabletop setup. Oh yeah, yeah. Setup, the and it comes in white as well if you need the option, black or white, whereas the Ambio is just <laughs> Here's a log. Yeah, it is a log. <laughs> um, uh, moving on to the JBL 1300X. We, we liked this part. Oh, it was great. People keep asking about it. Yeah. Um, just like your elevator pitch for this one. Um, well, you're never, like now that they work, the battery operated surrounds um, on the 1300 are, I, I love that. I love that so much. I love that when they're attached, you know, musically, the 1300 is very musical and it sounds, you know, very kind of hi-fi, uh, especially at its price point. Um, the, 13, the, the, the JBL is, it's a bit boomier. And even when you start to tune that and everything, it's still pretty, still pretty bombastic. Um, the, the Arc system is a lot more balanced. Uh, in terms of construction-wise in the app, the Sonos is just, it's just a better overall experience. I know people are gonna ask the Nakamichi Dragon. Oh, you know what, yeah. you bet. It's better than everything. <laughs> For those people that are gonna ask like, well, should I get the full Arc system um, or would I be happier with the you know the traditional setup I already have, or like a home theater, a home theater with like a the receiver, receiver with five and or all six the speakers. speakers and all that? I mean, look, because they're all going to say, well, which one's better? If you have never built a home theater before, if this is your first foray into surround sound, and maybe you are coming from a TV or a pair of powered monitors like Kanto YU4s or something like that, or maybe even Klipsch the fives, things like that. And you're like, okay, I've experienced smart powered products in two channel. Now I want to broaden my horizons. I think the Sonos is a logical better next step than maybe getting all tangled up in what I will consider to be a little bit more of an enthusiast system. Um, all that said, I totally understand how people that have had 
you know, the, the enthusiast system, the dedicated everything, the individual channels and whatnot, maybe got a Sonos Arc system for a bedroom or a den or something and realized, like, I'm good to go, man, and have sold off other stuff. Like, I understand how that could happen. Um, it really does come down to just how vested in this do you want to be, you know? Because I will say one thing, can you do better than the ARC for around the same money or a little bit more by going the more dedicated home theater component route? Sure. Sure you can. Absolutely. And, you know, that's great. But you're also going to be far, much more in the driver's seat with making sure that you get the most out of that. And it's going to require you to have a level of understanding of certain topics and things that maybe you don't want to get into. So in that respect, soundbar systems in general, but the Sonos especially, make it possible for you to just sort of follow along on your phone, set it up in less than 20 minutes, follow the prompts, and you're going to be popcorn in hand watching a movie at a very high level in probably under an hour. And I can't say that that will be the case, even if you followed all of our recommendations for a two to three, $4,000 home theater. It might have a three to four hour learning curve, if not a longer one, if it's your very first one. So that's just kind of some things to keep in mind, I would say. Just do what makes sense for you. Yeah. Um, it's really easy to spend time on channels like this or other forums mm -hmm. and get, and, and, you know, maybe you already have an idea in mind what you want. And then the more you read, the more people you t ask, yeah. they're going to do whatever they can to convince you to go a different way. I don't, I don't think it's to convince you to go a different way. I think it's just human nature that when you're giving someone assistance or help or advice, you are inadvertently attempting to steer them towards a point of view or a situation. To your point of view. Your point of view or a situation or an experience you relate to. Um, which is why every time, you know, we say certain things on this channel, like some people go, well, that's just uh, ludicrous. And then other people go, I agree. And it's like, because you guys have this experience. But yeah, there's and also I, I also think it's a lot of the reason why some people say, oh, you're biased or you're getting paid. You know. Yeah, because we can one minute say sound bars are great, and then the next minute yeah. it's like, here's a $9,000 complete home theater, yeah. and we're like, oh my God. this, And it's like, you can't like both. Yeah. It's like, you actually can, because these are for different people. All right, guys, that is now our review, finally, of the full shebang Sonos system. That's what they should have called it, the full shebang. <laughs> um, the full shebang Sonos system. Uh, I dare to ask, what did you think? We don't care. <laughs> we we do. We, we do. We do. Uh, what At did this you... point, it doesn't matter. <laughs> Y'all already own it. <laughs> Millions sold. It's like coming in and reviewing McDonald's at this point. Yeah, yeah. Like, what do you mean they have a Big Mac? <laughs> <laughs> All right. So that's it, guys. That's our review. If you liked it, uh, please do give it a thumbs up, like, and subscribe. Go ahead and ring the bell so that you're notified. If you use any of the links that Christy's left for you down below, know that's a great way that you continue to show your support for this channel and all the work that we do here. And both of us, thank you very much for that. Please watch this video like yeah. four times. <laughs> please. Follow me, follow me on Instagram at Recovering Audio File, and that's it for us today. So remember, the only person who has to like the sound of your system is you. So happy listening, everybody. Thank you so much for watching. See you on the next video.